Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Gamerman here, and welcome back to Virtual Cottage. Today, we're going to be just chilling out at 3.28 a.m., and we're just going to chat for a while. And one thing I'd like to add, a little bit of campfire. Who doesn't like a good little bit of rain? This is a rare occasion where I wanted to do kind of an ASMR-style video. This is a video that you kind of put on in the background, you relax to, you chat with, you just kind of enjoy. Today I want to talk about something very special that um, I've had in my possession by the time this video was made, less than a few hours. It is Mori Calliope's Shimigami Note EP album. I absolutely love this album. I love it. I think it is the best album I've ever owned. And that's saying a lot because I own a lot of albums. Most people don't know this, but I own albums from Weird Al Yankovic, Bad Company. I own albums from Journey, Queen, Celtic Woman. I own a lot of albums thanks to my dad. And some of the albums are mine, but most of them are his. But listening to her album and listening to the interview DVD that came with the album, because I spot the extremely expensive but well worth limited edition version of the EP press, it is something that makes me encouraged to do more things that make me step out of my comfort zone, make me do things that I would never normally do. One thing that she said during the video was that the best thing you can do is if you feel like you have to change or you feel like something needs to change in your life and it's time for you to do something just different that you by all, by all means should. And to me, I wanted to do something that's more laid back. I wanted to do a video that was very long, very open, just gives me a chance to talk. Because I feel like as, as a content creator, I've set myself sort of that market that I want to hit, that niche that needs to be portrayed, that opening that I wanted in life. And I realize now that coming up on seven years, I've been doing nothing but gaming videos, a couple of train videos, but I've never done a video that I felt like is something that I wanted to do. Now that's not saying that none of my videos I've wanted to do. I've wanted to create every single video I've ever made, but there were times where I believed that I wasn't creating a video to, because I wanted to, I was creating a video because it's what people wanted. It was what somebody else wanted me to do. And when I started to feel this way, it started to feel more and more like I wasn't creating content that I wanted. And there were a lot of moments where I wanted to up and give up. I wanted to quit. I wanted to say, I need to back out of this. I need to do my own thing for a while and I wanted to leave the YouTube alone. But I, I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to say I'm taking a hiatus because I've done it three times since I started this channel. I, I, back in high school, I had to take one for a long time. I took it for about a month. And it was right when my channel was very early, just sprouting as a YouTube channel. And I distinctly remember, I went to go visit my family. And I was visiting my brother and we were all sitting around his big TV that he had set up. And on the TV, I noticed that my channel popped up in his recommendations. And I said, hey, look, it's my YouTube channel. He goes, yeah, we've, I've been following your channel since I found it. I said, really? You, you've been following my channel? And he said, well, that was until you quit. I'm not really following you anymore. 
And it was that moment that made me realize that I wasn't just doing it for myself, but I was doing it for my family as well, to show them that I had something that was a project of mine that I was passionate about. But something that made me go back was hearing my family say, in their own way, I guess it was that I wasn't doing it anymore. And because I wasn't doing it anymore, it wasn't something that should be followed. Now, I don't know if that was to push me to go back to it, or that was just them being them. But it was the reason I came back. It was the reason I came back and was like, all right, we're doing this. We're creating more content, and we're going to do it the way that I want to. I couldn't bring myself to say what kind of market I wanted to hit. I want to be a gamer. That's just what I want to be. Because I've always had this want that when I play a game, it's an escape. Most people don't know this, and it's a, it's a very personal thing for me to say, but I'm going to talk about it today. When... I played video games as a child, it was a way to get away from the horror that I was living in. Now, I want to emphasize this by saying I'm not going to go into full detail about what I went through in my life, but there were times where life wasn't fair, and of course me saying life isn't fair is, is something that everyone knows. But it's become much more fair and understanding and caring to me in the last few years of my life. And I've learned that, excuse me, let me take a drink. That now I have this luxury, this ability to create stuff that I want. Because I always used to believe that I had to create things that were set in someone else's image. Or they were set in a way that was made for somebody else, or I was doing it because this person said, would you be willing to do this for me? And I went into YouTube with the thought of that I'm going to do it for myself, and I'm doing it for the money. I learned very quickly that doing it for the money was the wrong idea, because YouTube, you can't gain money right off the get-go. You can't, you can't hit the ground running. You never can. What you have to do is hit the ground face first. You always, I've learned that through making videos, as long as I have, that when you hit the ground with your first video, that's how people are gonna see you for the, for the longest time. That's the image that you're gonna give off. And your next video has to play off of that. And then your third video has to completely destroy the original video completely tear it apart and be like, no, this is what I do. And each video, you have to make it interesting. You have to make it different. But here's the catch. You don't have to make it different if you don't want to. You don't have to tear things apart if you don't want to tear them apart. What you can do is you can say, this is what I want to do for now. And if I want to change it in the future, I can set it up to do so. I have not given myself that luxury originally. I gave myself a very limited mark of, all right, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm allowing myself to do. This is the limit of what I'm allowing myself to do. I play games, so I'm going to play games. And that's exclusively what I wanted to do. So when I first started making videos, and my first videos, which are on a special playlist that everyone can go see, were vlogs, it pissed me off, because I didn't have the technology at the time to record videos, games. I just didn't. Um, to put it bluntly, when I moved to live with my dad about ten years ago, the first phone I was ever given was a track phone with minutes, and it was a flip phone with a nine-number keypad. That was my first phone. I couldn't play games on it, I couldn't record anything on it, very well at least, but 
it was a phone. It kept me in contact with the people that I wanted to. It kept me in contact with work. It kept me in contact with my dad, my mom. It kept me in contact with everybody I wanted to. But the limitation of dealing with time was something that I learned very quickly because of using this phone. I learned that every second counted. Every minute that I used on that phone was one minute that I no longer had. It was one minute that was gone. And if I filled that minute with silence, it was a wasted minute. Or so I thought. Then I started to think that I could use a better phone. I believed I could get a better phone, and so my mother was kind enough to let me borrow one of her phones that the family wasn't using that had unlimited talk, text, and data. It was an iPhone. I don't remember what brand or what uh, model it was, but it was an iPhone. And I lost my mind because it gave me a chance to record different stuff. It let me record my personal life. It let me record other things. Of course, this was years down the road. You know, I was doing gaming videos way before I got the iPhone. But the iPhone introduced me to opening up the market to vlogs and to do other kinds of content. And when that happened, I realized that the limitations that I had set on myself were just that. They were limits that I was putting on myself. So, as the years went on, I still stuck to the gaming as, as heavily as I could, because that's, that's me. I am Gamer Man. But it also felt like that there were times where I didn't want to be Gamer Man. So I took a second hiatus. Um, I want to say towards the end of high school. I took off and I decided that I was going to try and do that stupid uh, spiritual thing where I was going to find myself. You know, like backpacking in the woods kind of find yourself. And the way I did it was I distanced myself from everyone. I backed away from everything that I held close to me. And I said, I'm not doing this. I'm going to do something completely off the cuff. If it comes by, it comes by. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And if I get the chance to take it, I'm going to take every opportunity I have, whether it be a good one, a bad one, or a poor one. And it was at that moment where I realized that most of the decisions I had been making were safety decisions. And what a safety decision was to me was here's a choice between option A and option B. Option A is the choice that you want to make, but it comes with a high risk. It's a very, very high risk, and you don't know if anyone's going to like it at all. But there's this other option, option B, which is a safe option. It's a lot better, it's a lot more comfortable, and it's low risk, but still has a very high reward. And I'd always pick the option that seemed to be less resistant. But I learned very, very quickly, it was only about a few videos into it, where when I was making a video like that, Yes, it was the safer option, but it wasn't the option that I wanted because by the end of it, I had made content that was just to be uploaded. It was to be uploaded and forgotten. And playing uh, recently, I've been playing Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. There'll be a new episode coming out sometime this week. It's strange to me to see a game tear me down so much but make me think about it more? Because it's got me thinking that I'm doing what I want. 
which is a weird concept to me because most of the rigid schedules that I've set myself they're not really for me they're to put myself in they're for me and they're not for me the reason they're for me is so that I can set myself a pattern where I can do specific things during certain days of the week and then I don't have to worry about it in the future. Like, I'll mass record videos on days like today. I've recorded two videos already. Three, actually. And, um... That's, that's, that's kind of what I do. I'll mass record videos, three, four, five, six of them, and I'll upload them maybe twice a week, maybe once a week. And I'll put some videos in the same place, I'll put other videos in a different place, but with Suffering Saturday, it's always going to be on a Saturday. If I miss a Saturday, that's okay. I can put it on the next one and just pick it up from there. But this brings me to the point of when you set yourself schedules, you don't want to set one that's overbearing. In my first few videos of actually doing video games, and I mean my first ever Minecraft videos. I didn't know how to balance them. I didn't know how to set them up so that they would be more spaced out. So that the people who were watching had something to anticipate. When I first got Bandicam, which is the stuff that I used to record, not Spawn, but I still love them. I recorded, I went from having 15 videos, I distinctly remember this. I went from having 15 videos on my channel to an a staggering 72 in the matter of 48 hours. That was me sitting down at the computer, and every second that I could, I was hitting the record button. And I realized, I didn't realize I was doing that until it was over, until I had to go home. Because I was visiting my mother, and that's when I realized it. I took a look at my channel when I had the opportunity to. And my video count shot up. And I thought to myself, did I really spend 48 hours that couldn't be spent with my mother on recording videos? And it hit like a lead balloon. It hit hard. Because it made me realize that at that very second, the video was all that mattered. The content was all that mattered. But what really mattered was the people who helped me get there. Was the people who cared. Who let me use their technology. Who let me use the roof over my head to do that. And it hurt. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to back away from YouTube very early. Am I going to back away from YouTube? No. I don't think I ever will. But will I slow down with it? Yes. But I won't slow down to the point where the channel's not functioning. I want to slow down to the point where it doesn't feel like I'm waiting any second I can to sit down and record a video. Going back to what I was talking about in the beginning about Mori Calliope and her album and everything, she had been waiting to do a press like this. She had been waiting to do this, apparently. And when she finally did it, her excitement was there. While editing a couple of these videos, I have listened to that album over and over and over. And probably before this video even goes out, I've listened to it three or four or five times 
and maybe even forced people to listen to it with me. Because the album meant so much to her, and the fact that I own it as the first piece of any sort of Hololive merch ever that I've ever had, it changes everything. I can look back and look at the physical copy in my hand and say that someone spent a long, long time of their life preparing for this moment. And here it is in the physical realm and they can be proud of it. I have made over 400 videos on this platform. I've made well over that if you combine my two channels together. With my two channels combined, I have over 150 followers. That's a lot. If you count my Twitch included with that, we have 200 different people who watch my content. And some of those people are resubs. They're people who have followed me before on other platforms. But that's not the point. The point is that they liked my content so much, and they supported me so much, that they were willing to jump across platforms and cross mediums, specifically when I say that I mean different channels, to watch my content unfold. I was scared to death to record and stream my first ever book that I wrote. I say first ever book because that was what I wanted it to be. But it wasn't the first story I ever wrote. The first story I ever wrote was the story for the steam locomotive that is the mascot for this channel. And I still don't know if people like it. The website that it's on is basically dead. I have the website in existence, but I'm too, too attached to it to delete it. And I want to try and keep it updated in some form or another. But I may tell that story one day. I may not, I may tell it, who knows. But I told the story of Alexander and Xena and thought to myself that if I can tell that story the same way my dad tells stories, that it could be a new medium for me to try. But I was too scared to put it on this channel because I felt like it would sodden the market of gaming on this channel. This channel was meant to be a gaming channel. It's always meant to be a gaming channel. So anytime I scroll through my history of videos and I see a vlog or I see a skit or I see just something dumb that I've created that involves real life. It sticks out like a sore thumb to me. Because it's not the content that I wanted this channel to be in the beginning. But when I start looking at it more and more, I realize that if they didn't exist, then I wouldn't have the channel that I have today. Someone once asked me, if I could remove any video off the face of my channel, what video would it be? And my go-to is the Great Locomotive Chase. I uploaded that video for the sake of school. It was a throwaway video. It wasn't a video that was meant to stick around. 
It was a video that I intended that after school was going to be deleted. But when I got out of school, I thought, maybe I can just leave it there. And now it's my most viewed video on this platform, on this channel. I don't know how that's possible. I don't know why it's possible. But when people ask me if, why I want to get rid of it, it, because that was the plan. It was a throwaway video. It was meant to just be deleted. And then... 2019 rolled around. And a weird channel by the name of Unis Honest showed up. And it taught me that I can't delete everything. Because they spent a year building that channel up. Building it and building it and building it. And in the very end, with the click of a button, it was erased from existence. Of course, there are the people who, you know, upload the compilations, and there's the people that have the merchandise of the channel, yes. But that doesn't change the fact that the original video is gone. That doesn't change the fact that the two people that make the videos have moved on. Sure, they make references to Unis on us all the time. But they want it to be gone. They want it to be erased. In a hundred years, Will this channel even be a remembered? I'm referring to Unis Honest, not my own. And it's strange to think that in a few years, my channel could, for some unknown, unexplained reason, explode. And I could get thousands and thousands of followers and millions of people watching the videos. And lo and behold, I get diamond play buttons, I get the gold play button, I get the silver play button, you know what I mean? But once a friend said to me that the reason he likes the community he has is because it's small. And he can get to individually know each person that comes by his community whether it be for a permanent stay or temporary. The big streamers I've tried I don't know how many times to get recognized by them. To talk to them, to chat to them, even have them respond to something I say. But they can't respond to everybody. Because they're one person and there's thousands of people that watch them in a single moment. So many words go flying across the screen, and they can't read them all. And those that can are very talented in doing so. But this brings me to the most important question of, if I was to grow big overnight, would anything change? Yes, a lot of things would change. The way I upload would probably change. I'd upload more frequently. The kinds of videos I do might change. But would the content themselves itself change? No. I don't think it would. Because there are people I have to thank constantly for my existence here on YouTube. And I can't begin to fathom the people who start YouTube, they make a couple videos, and then they give up. Or they make one video that meets millions of people, but they only make one of them. It's, it's so weird to have that thought of, here's... Who knows how many people watching one little video of a train chase. And yet, 
that's the only video they'll ever see. They won't move on to say another video to see what content I create, and they won't hit the red button and subscribe. But what they'll do instead is they'll look at the video, they'll watch it for a little bit, they'll be like, well, that was really cool, and they'll continue their scroll across the internet. I can't blame them for that. I do the same thing every night. I don't sleep very well. Um, in fact, that's one thing I wanted to say, is that someone asked me about, do I sleep well? There are days where I stay up for over 24 hours. Yesterday is no exception. I mean yesterday as in day of recording this yesterday. From Wednesday to Thursday, I stayed up 24 hours. I stayed up over 24 hours. I've only done it a few times in my life, but it breaks me. It breaks me mentally because I have to fight myself to stay awake just long enough to hit that threshold. Just long enough so that I can get to the point where I feel I can actually sleep. This video is no exception. It's 4 a.m. and I should be asleep because I just got off of work a few hours ago. But I'm not tired. Physically, I'm worn out. Mentally, I'm worn out. But I just can't bring myself to go lay down and say goodnight. It gets to that point where you can expect something to happen. And hope it happens, but if you don't act upon it, then you'll never do it. It's like when you get up in the when you wake up in the morning, and the first thing you want to do is just go back to bed. That choice could be the very thing that changes your whole life. As far as I know, there is nothing I'd rather be doing than YouTube. I'm fine with doing YouTube, and I love doing Twitch. It's the moments in between that make me question if what I'm doing is what I really want to do. But it's the comments of appreciation. It's the comments of enthusiasm. It's seeing someone in public look at you, recognize who you are, walk up to you, and thank you for a specific video that you've made. That particular interaction has happened to me and my dad but one time. And it breaks my mind that it happened. And it makes me smile and want to cry a little bit because that person doesn't know how much that made my day worthwhile. I could keep rambling on and 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 on. And on. But I'm reaching that point where rest is essential. So I want to thank my 140 subscribers for staying with me for so long. And I want to thank Maury Calliope for being an inspiration to me. And the deep, and all of the fake videos, people are like, oh, she has. You know, this is her face reveal, yada, yada, yada. I just... I don't believe it. Because the person they say is Maury... 
versus the person who is Mori are not the same. Mori is awesome. Full Alive is awesome. And if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be trying to figure out how the hell to join Hollow Alive in the first place. It'd be awesome to do it. It'd be awesome to be part of another English group of Hollow Alive. But if that day comes, then I'm going to accept it when it does. I'd love to join a crew like the Vanoss crew, the Dream SMP crew, Rip Technoblade, or use any big YouTube group at them, you know? But I don't know who I would join, but if someone did ask, I think I would say yes. If you guys enjoy these kind of videos where I just ramble on with little virtual cottage and thing, and you just like hearing me talk, please let me know. And I'll do more of them in the future. But as for right now, I'm going to turn off my little fan. I'm going to turn off my micro air conditioner. And I'm going to back away. And I want you all to know that you all are special to me. I may not know all of you subscribers on a personal level. And I may not know every single follower on my Twitch on a personal level. But I want each and every single one of you to know that I can't have possibly gotten where I am today without you guys. And this video might not age well. It might someday down the road I'll have zero subscribers or I'll have millions or I'll have 139 of you. But I want you to know that it doesn't matter how many numbers on the screen there are. I will still be Gamerman. And if you ever see me out in public, don't hesitate to come up and say hi. Anyone who does come up and say hi to me, it's a huge relief. It's a huge smile to my face. And Dad loves the publicity too. Because he sees me smile and he knows that I'm doing exactly what I want to do with my life. So if you ever get the chance to come and see me out in public, or you see me walking around with anybody, go ahead and stop by. Just if, even if to say hello, or just to give me a high five, it would mean the world to me. But with that being said, I'm gonna go to bed. At least at the time of making this video. I want you all to have a blessed week, blessed afternoon, blessed day, or blessed evening whenever you're watching this. And remember that you matter. You matter to somebody who, you might not know it or not, but owes a lot to you. And every friendly gesture that you make whether it be holding the door open for a lady trying to get through the door, carrying a grocery bag for someone who's got their hands full, or simply just asking if they need help and try and help them with the simplest task. That means something in the grand design. And I can't emphasize this enough, but if you have a want create YouTube videos, or create live streams, or create anything that you want the world to see, don't shy it away. Persevere through your own fears and your doubts, 
and put this foot through the door and take the first step to create it. Because the moment that you do that, you set in motion something that could have been locked away had you said, I'm not pressing that button. I learned that seven years ago, roughly. And now, I get to do something that I never thought I'd be able to do. And that's thank you all for watching this video. Or even just listening in the background. You all are wonderful. And if this video helped you guys out, I'd love to know in the comment section what you thought of the video. If you want me to do another video like this where it's a bit motivational, a bit into my own psyche, or whatever, let me know. I'll do it again. And if no one watches it, I'll still make another when I feel like it. But I never want anyone to feel like they're alone. I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. And with that being said, ta-ra.